Now let's come to our second part of the training session today that is some advanced features of the subledger accounting. The first advanced features is your manual journal entries. How do we create our manual entries in the system? So manual journal entries, why do we create them? They are normally created in the business for the adjustments that do not have a transaction associated with it. So there is normal AP and AR transactions which has their own say a invoice is created, a receipt is made against that invoice, but there are some adjustment entries that you pass in your normal business to some of the accounting differences or to manage some of your suspense accounts, your clearings or for any other purpose which do not have any transactions associated with them. So for this purpose you will create your manual subledger entries. So you can create it from any of your subledgers. For example, for your payables adjustments, you can create your manual subledger entries in your AP and for receivables you can create it from your AR. These journal entries are processed through subledger accounting and in the same way transferred and posted to your journal ledger. And these, these subledger journals, the transferred journals, they will have the subledger name as the name of the journal, as the source of the journal. So in your GL, if you see the transactions, you will have your sources like your receivables transactions, payables transactions. So they will be your subledger transactions. I'm sorry, it just okay. So how do we create these subledger entries in the system? Let us see what are all the fields. So you enter the complete information required for a manual subledger entry. Yeah, any questions? Uh, Priya, this is Signesh. So yes, this Signesh. is applicable only when we create our own subledger application, right? Not for the existing one. No, no, it is for the existing ones. So see the idea is you have your normal business, your normal payables and your receivables. You create your invoices in payables, you create your payments and similarly in receivables you have your transactions, your receipts, your credit memos. But at the end of the year you pass some adjustment entries to match your accounts or there are some there is no, no customer against that but you got some extra cash. You have to pass some adjustment entries for that. Now these entries can be your payables, you got some expenses that you don't know from where you want to post or it is not related to any supplier or any transaction so, or you have some, yeah. Yeah, you go ahead and then I'll ask to Priya. Um, yeah, so for, similarly for the receivables you have say some cash is extra with you so you don't know where to do or from who, which customer it came. It's your receipt, you know, but you don't know which customer paid you. So these are your adjustment entries, which are normally do not related to any of the transactions. Yeah, correct. But uh, I'll ask you a question. So normally yeah. when we create journals in GL, okay, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. either you have the option to select the source as manual. If you create a manual yeah. journal, the system correct. will default the source as manual. If you load correct. the spreadsheet, the source will come as spreadsheets. But Correct. while creating a GL in, uh, I mean the journal in GL, I will not be able to select the subledger application as source, right? Yeah, because these are not GL entries. These are the subledger entries. Oh, that will yes. automatically, yeah, 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 it's not a GL journal. I'm talking, I, I'll come to the point what I'm talking about. I'll, we'll create them in the system. So th that's a different, GL journals are the different, that is for the journal ledger you are creating. For these journals, you will run your accounting. So all your accounting rules, your whatever rules you have created, they will be applicable on these transactions. You will create accounting and then you will post them to GL. So these are the subledger entries that you are creating manually and not the GL journals. So there is a so, difference between these two. So you meant to say like, so instead of uh, making the system to auto-generate the journal from subledger transactions, we do also have an option to create a manual journal entry in subledger. Correct. And then yes. to GL, right? Correct, oh, okay. correct. Yes, yes. Thank so it you. is similar to a normal entry. So you will have all the journal entry descriptions, everything. You will attach your supporting references, which automatically comes in your normal journals as per the rules. So you assign your descriptive flex fields. 
So how to create these descriptive sections? I have covered as a last in the session. So once you create your DFS, you will attach them to your manual journals, header or lines. You will populate values from your default currencies. You will enter your conversion type. And then you will complete. I'll come to what these projected balances are later. And then you will complete and then you will post these entries like any other AP or AR entry to the subledger. Now to make this more clear, let's go into the instance. And let's see what these entries mean. So let us go to payables. And I'll go to invoices. Okay. So here if I search these create invoices, manage invoices, they are my normal AP transaction. That is my items will be there, my supplier will be there. Now I have an item which I sold, I mean is not in the stock for me, so that means I have sold to a supplier. Sorry, I'm talking the other way, I'm in AP. So I have an item in my stock which I got it from supplier, but I don't know who the supplier is. I don't have any details of that transaction and I just want to create an adjustment entry for me. So under these invoices, I have something called as accounting, where I run the accounting for all these transactions and have something called as the create adjustment journals. So I can create my own entries directly in the subledger. So let us create a adjustment journal or a manual subledger journal entry. So you will find the similar option in receivables as well. Okay, so what all options it will ask? It will ask me all the details. It will first ask me the balance type because the other transactions, they will automatically come on the basis of your rules. So here you will enter all the details manually. So I will select my ledger. For example, I will say the India ledger. I will select my journal source. So it's an AP transaction or it's an AR transaction or it's my custom application. So I can select my custom application here as well. So this is both for your standard as well as custom applications. You will enter your accounting date. You will enter the category. Remember we created all these categories in the system as well in our day one. So similarly you can enter a category that this entry is related to what. If you do not know what relates to what, you can simply post it as a other as a or you can put your inventory cost, labor cost, or any other thing, invoice price, adjust which category you want to do. I just make it as a, I see it is none of these categories. It is just, I'll enter a description for this that why I am entering this subledger entry. I'm saying it's an oops, adjustment journal, an adjustment entry for an item with no supplier we have a business, uh, yeah so we have created a new subledger application right I mean, a lot mm -hmm. of so yeah is, right so is there a place where we go and what uh, create a journal entry or a subledger I mean a transaction for the subledger I mean in this UI yeah, yeah, we can, you can create your own, for example, you created, let me search mine, and these are the applications I created the first day, the PK1, and sim I can select that as my sources. So remember, this is not, uh, once you created, let me just open the day one material, um, so that it's easy. Mm -hmm. Sorry just for asking give. a lot of questions. It's okay, it's okay, no, no. Feel free to ask. Just one second. So, so that is your day that, one material. Yeah, the thing is that we are actually now we are in pay, a payable subletter model, right? I mean, we went to mm -hmm. payables and then we showed. Yeah. No, no, this it. screen is common. You can access it from any of the subledgers, but this screen is common. You can even oh. select your receivables here, yeah. Yeah, so yeah the that's screen is common, yeah. I mean, you can access it because the payables manager will not have access to the receivables application to access the screen. It's again based on the rules. You are seeing all these because you have all the rules. Got In that. the real life you want, yeah. <laughs> okay. So if I go to the first chase session, we created these journal sources, right? 
so pk tables legacy source and then i attach this journal source to my application correct here i attach this journal source so this is the journal source i'm selecting here for my sub ledger application that's my custom this is the source does that make sense now cool from where this source is coming cool so i can select all my application i can select assets here even if i'm coming from tables i can make it for assets because that's a common screen you have your receivables here as well you have your tags you have everything here so let us make tables you will enter a reference date if you want to give the completion status now we have two completion status here so once you create entries in your final status it transfers these entries to gl if you have the privilege of course to the post like we see an incomplete status will not allow i mean you can modify it before posting if it is in incomplete status once it is final they are the posted to the gl now you have your header information then you have your line information so i will create my own journal lines that is i'll create two lines of course my debit line or credit line minimum i can have three or four or five depending on the my entry but at least i will have a debit and credit line so let us select the accounts i'm hoping there must be some accounts for this ledger yes there are a company department let me select an expense account say furniture i'll click okay i'll select the item expense as my accounting class and i will say debit 1000 now it's an inr and then i will create say another debit line for my tax maybe I will say company, department, an account. Hmm, I have limited accounts here. Let me select P and M maybe, and I will say tax non-recoverable. Cha cha cha. non recoverable tax say 100 and i will enter my credit line just to match this entry my company department account say cash account or the liability account actually here and i will select liability and i will say 1100 so this is my complete journal entry and i can give description for each line this is my liability line for example anything this is my tax line this is my item line or i can enter any details because it's an adjustment journal and you will need to give details or the descriptions at header it's mandatory because you should know in the audit trails you should give them that why are you passing this entry and then for each line you can have your descriptions and then you can attach your supporting references here like you created your with balances or without balances you can attach them here so for example i'm saying this supporting reference for my business entity and my value is say 200 and i will save and close likewise i can attach all these supporting references my currency information it's an inr currency and the additional information i have something called as third party type now third parties can be your customers and your suppliers so for example it's a payable journal and passing if i know any information about the supplier 
I can attach here, but this journal I'm making for an item with no supplier. So I don't know. This is not a mandatory information. But sometimes you know the supplier, but there are other reasons you just cannot pass a normal AP entry because it's just an adjustment you are doing for this supplier total balance. So at the end of the year, for example, the supplier total balance should be 2000, but in your system it's showing as 1900. So just for the 100 bucks, you just create an adjustment entry to make balance equal for this supplier. So in that case, you will select your supplier, number, site, everything. Otherwise, you will say, okay, no, I don't have any additional information. You save this journal. And then, and like any other journal, you will post this journal. So see, this is disabled. So you will make this completion status as final and then you will you can post this journal. As of now you can make any changes to this because it is in incomplete. It is saved but it is in incomplete status. So let us make it final. Save it. So this is now in final status and ready to be posted to journal ledger. Now this post is enabled. So you will post this to GL. This is how you create your sub ledger journal entries.